Hey, hey, what it do? What's up? Your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you for tuning in. And y'all, we have another season premiere. Real Housewives of Potomac to get into. I just knocked out Married to Medicine. So y'all make sure you go check that. This should be uploaded by now. So y'all make sure to go check out over there. Drop down in the comments and tell me what you feel about, uh, you know, the new season of Married to Medicine. But we got to get into the Potomac Housewives because we're finally here to talk about the scandal of the season, which is obviously... Robin and Juan Dixon, this, it, you know, this of all housewives delusions, you know, Robin is definitely, she's up there. I'd put her up there with, you know, Shannon Bador from OC, Lisa from Miami. Lisa from Miami might be at the top, actually. Yeah, yeah she might be at the top. Um, And now Robin, I can't think of other ones, but right now, Robin, you starting to, you starting to boot school boogie your way up to the top of just delusions of grandeur. So we're going to go ahead and get into it, y'all, because there's a lot to discuss. And I just tell you, Juan Dixon and Robin, y'all playing in our face right now. And I'm going to try not to get angry because one thing that is triggering for me is people who try to play my intelligence. And right now, what y'all really trying to do, we just we just not finna do it. We not finna do it. I just tell you, it just... It puts a burning in my stomach where I just, just want to, ooh, ooh, I tell you. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Just recenter, Angela. Recenter. Recenter. We're not, we not going to do it. So, yes, you guys. We're House of the Potomac. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm trying to calm down, but the first day I'm seeing is Robin and Juan Dixon. After they do the whole, you know, thunder and lightning and, you know, of course, the flashbacks of what, uh, what's to come for this season and yada yada so we get robin she doing the, uh, the old sweet you know try to then you know what they're trying to do give us real you know the family household we're newlyweds you know we're in this we're all in this together all of that type stuff so robin she's in the house putting their pictures of of their wedding up you know what it is we already know what's happening putting the pictures of their wedding up why he come in was hope with his old devious ass and kisses her on the lips and sits down and she's like, oh yeah, you know, it's great to be back from the Bahamas. You know, got to get back to real life. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know. She's like, but you know, right now, real life is just a bit, you know. Real life is a bitch right now. And he's like, yeah, you know. She's like, it's just, it's just so much piling on right now. And so we know what they have to do. Right now is, you know, damage control. Right now because... Bravo, the reason Bravo brought you, brought you back, Robin and Juan Dixon, is because you played in their face last time, okay? And y'all clearly came back because y'all knew y'all were obligated to tell y'all story. Point blank, period. And we haven't seen Juan on Potomac since the get-go. This man don't talk about nothing, nada, okay? He don't ever want to show up for Robin. He had been, this man has been to one reunion, y'all. One. And I guarantee he ain't gonna be at this one. I dang sure know that unless uh, Bravo signed him in the contract to show up. Because at the end of the day, you know you need the money. Because Juan ain't gonna have a good, decent job for a minute, okay? That's the truth. So, y'all know y'all signed on because Robin knows she need the money ever since Juan lost his job. And Juan, you definitely, uh, you have nothing else going for you at the moment. So you're literally depending on Robin, the one person that you've been doing wrong this whole freaking time. So get to it, okay? We're not going to keep, keep playing these games with these BS ass stories that y'all trying to feed us of, oh, I'm just a nice guy. So let's get into it. So, you know, they, they're really trying to knock out all the key points they're like, oh, y'all know what y'all got to talk about this season. And they literally just went through all of them. Let's, let's go ahead and get it out so we ain't, we ain't got to discuss it no anymore. That's what they try to do. Let's hurry up and talk about everything and move on. They really are just trying to, like, sweep this shit under the rug. So Robin's like, well, you know, it's just so much because, you know, the girl from Canada – and immediately walked, man, you know that, you know, I did mess up, you know, but you know, all it is is she came down, she was trying to see the dude who played for the Ravens, but she lost her wallet, you know, and, and you know, she called me, and, you know, I just, man, I shouldn't have did, I'm, but you know, I've shoot, I've given, 
you know, homeless people, $20, $50, you know, and it's just, I'm just a nice guy, man. Sometimes I just be too nice, man. First question, if she's coming to see another nigga, why is she calling you on? Not only that, she's not coming to just see some regular Joe Schmo. She's coming to see a man that plays for the Ravens. But she calls you? Let's stop it. Stop it. Tweet, flag on the play. Let's not. So, one, it's like the, ugh, the more we start seeing, well, I, I've been clocked one, point blank, period. But the more we just see how this stuff is playing out, you just see the characteristics of one, where you just realize this man is a coward. You're a coward, Juan, point blank, period. Because here it is, you're sitting here allowing Robin to deal with the, the, the collateral damage of your mess, and you refuse to come forward and take accountability and acknowledge the mess that is created and you want to put the shift the blame to everybody else except the person who's made the freaking mess which is you so now it's oh you know uh she was like yeah you know i just wasn't expecting everybody to come for me the way they did you know after uh after the podcast first of all robin everybody came for you because you try to be real slick talking about all oh, the paywall. Y'all hear more stuff after the after the paywall, pay for it on the podcast. Well, you know, good god dang well, you wasn't gonna you weren't gonna tell no new story than the story that you literally telling right now, for one. And for two, you started catching heat because at the end of the day, this stuff came out knowing what you were doing to to, to Candace. You know what you did to Candace. And the thing that's really bothering me is, is Robin is trying uh, trying to play dumb. When you watch people try to play stupid, when they know that you know that they know that you know that you try to play them like play play stupid. Like, girl, we see you, we see you trying to play stupid, but I can see it in your eyes that you know you're clocked. But it's like I'm just gonna stick to it. I'm gonna stick to the plan. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. And it's like, girl. Is written all over your face. Okay. So um, he's like, man, I told you not to do that. And she was like, well, you know, it's just so crazy. You know, um, he was like, uh, it's just, that's just the way the world is now. People just, they just so miserable. You know, it's all about clicks and likes and stuff like that. And she was like, well, you know, it's just, I just can't, I hate to see it. And then not only on top of that, you know, um, uh, it just didn't look good when you went to the laundromat with Bree, and she's like, "But it's so crazy because people try to come for us and they don't even know the full story." Like you call me that day talking about, "Man, you know I'm going to the laundromat with Bree." You know you've known her, we've known her for a long time. He's like, "Man, yeah, you know it's just, uh, you know when you when they see a, a beautiful, attractive woman, you know she's beautiful and attractive." Robin had to throw in there, "Yeah, people say she looked like me." He was like. Yeah, she's beautiful and attractive. And it was like, <laughs> damn. <laughs> so he's like, you know, man, I'm an attractive guy. She's an attractive guy. Like, you know, uh, of course people's imagination is going to go running. Then it's like, on top of that, Robert tried to pull the, uh, oh, back with the girl in Canada. Well, you were up there, you know, and you had the hotel. Like, why wouldn't you go for it? Why, why wouldn't you, you know, take the opportunity? He was like, man, did you see her? And she was like, no, but you did. Why? Stop. That's what these niggas do. They be like, anytime they get caught up, the first excuse they thought, man, she ain't you, babe. She ain't you. I wouldn't even dare. You know, man, look at her. Look at her. She ain't even cute like that. Like, these niggas will anything. Literally anything. These men out here will a corpse. Quite literally a corpse. So, let's not. So, um, then, the next scandal. We don't win... Damn, like I told y'all, they trying to knock all these scandals out and d not discuss it no more because we know Juan is good for trying to hurry up and glaze over something. That's what he's done every season. Anytime Robin has brought up anything in regards to how he's treated her in the past, how it was to be in the relationship when he was playing ball, you know, the situation with the money being stolen, uh, the setup in the household, he does not like discussing their issues he refuses to acknowledge 
what is going on in their household and he wants to glaze over it. So Robin has no choice but to like glaze over it. And so Robin, you would have hit us with the, oh, well, you know, um, that's happened. You know, we worked through it. It was a year ago and, you know, we worked through it. Uh, and it's like, did y'all do? But did y'all work through it? Or did y'all just, uh, did you work through it? Or are you just ignoring that it happened? Because that's what it's giving. For real, for real. So then the next scandal, like I said, we went from Canada girl to laundromat. Now we got to get to, uh, to, to, to the copping scandal. He's like, she's like, yeah, man, you know, on top of that, you know, you lost your job and that's devastating. He was like, man, you know, it ain't devastating, but you know, it's hard. No, you been, been dang right is devastating. You lost yet another job and are depending on Robin once again. Y'all have been struggling financially since the get-go. And ever since Robin lost that money, she feels indebted to try and fix this shit with Juan. And she got the money back, clearly working for Rouseweiser and Potomac and all that type of stuff like that. But now here it is. Juan is having to be, depend on Robin financially to take care of stuff. And he's definitely going to resent her for that fact. Um, and so she's like, yeah, you know, uh, people, it just they just seem to take joy in, you know, you losing your job. And, and it's like, no, people aren't taking just joy in him losing his job. But at the end of the day, like, he got busted off of something that was dead ass wrong. Like, dead wrong. For real, for real. Um, and so, of course, you know, people, they miserable. They want clicks and likes. And, man, we just, we, we not even going to give it no energy. You know, it's all them. Like, we heard what Juan says. In the beginning of the episode, just for Robin to literally spit the same shit out at the end of the episode. Like, at this point, you could just hear, like, his, the way he's talking coming out of Robin's mouth. Um, and nonetheless, you know, he want to glaze over, man. I ain't even worried about it. You know, I'm just worried about raising our two sons. And that's the gimme gotcha for Robin right there, too. You could tell behind the scenes, at least for me. The way he's been, man, I ain't focused on that. You know, we 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 per, uh, raising our two sons. That's the the Achilles heel that he always throws on Robin. I guarantee. Oh, you know that we gotta raise our sons together, Robin. You know they need a man in the household. You know who's gonna show them how to how to be a man. You know two boys. You know a woman can't raise no boy to be a man. You know that that black boys need their fathers in their life and stuff like that. And you know they they trying to tear us down. Like we we know what the rhetoric that he pulling behind the scenes. But we'll get more into that. So moving on, um, we have um. Who was it first? Actually, it don't really matter. Let's just go ahead and knock out Candace, Karen, and Wendy. They all meet up basically to discuss, you know, all the hoobla with Robin. And they all feel the same way, which was, bitch, for real? You had all this going on, but they had the nerve to, like, try to come for us, especially Candace. And then, oh, Robin had the nerve to be in the beginning, too. Oh, I don't, it was so shocking to see that Candace was upset because, you know, I defended her as much as I could. But then you see, that's, that was the key right there, as much as I could. See, Robin, that's what you were doing. You were saying just enough to cover your ass with Candace, but you weren't trying to fully jump on because you didn't want to completely abandon Giselle in that, once again, you know, just game plan that Giselle always comes with every season. So... Candace, of course, is talking to Karen and Wendy like, I'm really pissed off because I really felt like Robin was somebody I was building a relationship to which we say again to you, Candace, why the fuck do you keep trying to build a relationship with Robin, Robin and Giselle? And it's like she wants, it's, she seems to keep trying to have this attraction to wanting to be okay with them and good with them and make and be friends with them. But how many times do you just got to keep playing in your face? For real, for real. I think she's good with Robin for the most part, you know, outside of Giselle. Because when Robin isn't with Giselle, a lot of people like we like Robin outside of Giselle. But the problem is she she's a follower. Robin is a follower, okay? Um, 
So, of course, Karen is like, yeah, you know, it was awesome. But, yes, you would have come for me. And, girl, you ain't even being 100% honest. <laughs> and so they start asking in the confessional, uh, Wendy, do you think Karen's 100% honest about her relationship? She like, next question. I mean, Karen, are you 100% honest with your relationship? Hell no. Nah. Um, but, our, okay, the expectation is not to be Oh, you just got to give up all of your life completely, you know, just be completely 100% honest, you know, with, you know, with, with TV. We understand there are some things you keep for yourself, but at the gist of everything, reality TV is supposed to be based on the reality of what's going on in your life. And something as big as that, Robin, especially with it being so public, you knew it had to be addressed. You knew it did. But you, like I said, you're trying to glaze past it because you want to protect one. Oh, his, make sure his boys, you know, see a good father figure. It's always on the women to make sure their husband looks good for their kids. And the shit is getting old. Um. So, yeah. Um. Basically, Robin, Wendy, and Candace were just kind of like, man, we're going to have to like Robin up because she really came to us with... It was all the scheme that Robin set up to come with us with the bullshit, okay? So then we see Ashley. She at the hub, you know, $2.2 million mansion, uh, you know, five, five bedroom, four bath with her sons. And, you know, she said, you know, it's just so hard. You know, I'm just, you know, being a single mother and, you know, just doing it all on my own. And then they, and then they flash to the nanny. She's like, well, me and Daisy, of course. And so we see the boys over there, like, on the counter and whatnot. She goes outside um, and she talks, she called Giselle basically to talk about everything. And Giselle's like, girl, but did I see you in the Bahamas with Michael? And she was like, maybe, maybe not. You know, she's like, we're basically just good, you know, for the boys, essentially. So then Ashley reveals that, you know, on the house, you know, Michael's name is still on the mortgage. And she's like, you know, I, you know, I might not be in a rush to renew or to remove his name, you know. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm, I'm dragging my feet because at the end of the day, like, that's security. And it's about time Ashley admitted it because last season, Ashley knew she couldn't come into the season dragging the same storyline of, oh, yeah, me and Michael are going to divorce. Because, bitch, we knew last season you wouldn't. So you couldn't come to us with another scheme saying that y'all was getting ready to split when we knew y'all wasn't because that's how you got this house. You admitted that with the minute you admitted that Michael helped you buy this house, the, it was all it was all done so yeah so she was like so what, what what happened and she was like basically you know he his name is on the mortgage he helps pay for it and it's not alimony but he sends you know child support and at this point you know ashley she she thought she had the game sold up when when but she, girl you didn't read the fine print it's given she didn't read the fine print of that contract did you have a lawyer read over the contract before you signed it? Because it's giving you didn't. She really thought she was going to walk away with alimony, all that type of stuff like that. But at the reunion, when they did the flashback, it revealed she wouldn't be able to get no alimony. So it was kind of like, damn. Like, we thought we we thought Ashley, you know, got her two, uh, her two little security deposits with, with her two kids. But she did not. Okay? Um, but nonetheless, they get to talking about Robin and, you know... Giselle's like, I'm kind of worried because that's my friend and everything, but she's kind of sounding delusional, giving real delulu right now, you know? And I just can't my I can't have my friend going out like that. So she wants to put put a little something, something together so them as a group of friends can try to, you know, help Robin like in this situation and just see where her head's at. Cause bitch, you out here looking crazy in the streets because of your ain't sh okay. A S N. Y'all know what that means. Ain't sh ninja um moving on uh y'all mia <laughs> mia 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 so, so we go from ashley being able to afford her a uh, mansion to mia being able to not okay y'all mia don't went from the penthouse to, to the outhouse okay so we all know what happened with me and Gordon. she's like yeah i'm the ceo i'm the ceo you know i'm a businesswoman Oh really? Okay, so why so so why are you having the downsize from eleven thousand square feet to, to fifteen hundred <laughs> to twelve fifty? Okay, so basically, her and Gordon were talking about the struggle, and you know, 
him having to deal with the fact that they, you know, basically voted him off the off the board, I guess, voted him off Gilligan's Island. And it was given, I guess, allegedly he was either scheming, you know, skimming off the top or embezzling or whatever. And, you know, Gordon was even, she was like, yeah, you know, it's just so hard to see you on the couch for like two months. He was like, yeah, I was depressed. You know, and he was like, did you come in there yelling at me? And, you know, and he, she was like, yeah, you know, because I was just angry. You know, I just wanted you to get up. And he was like, well, shit, you kind of low-key believed I did it too. And she was like, well, you know, wasn't that like, I believed you, but, you know, I just, I mean, I had to be sure, you know, you know, for my kids too. <laughs> And so at this point, we all know now that they're divorced, but at that point, it's giving me, it was just like, bitch, I need to figure out a way out this mess. And she said it, she was like, you know, I just, and now we're in this situation and, you know, we live a certain lifestyle and, you know, we have to rely on savings and we got to figure out a way out this mess. And what you, what's a hoe going to do? Uh -huh. uh, okay, I'm going to figure out, look, was she, was she going to go back to what she know? And Gordy, you want to be all on Twitter upset that she left you and divorced you and everything. But nigga, stop acting like you didn't know what the setup was. You know when the when the well runs dry, okay? I got to say bye. Okay, that's what you said. When the well when the well runs dry, I got to say bye. And that she said toodaloo. <laughs> and she went off and found her uh, allegedly in another rich man because Gordon was like, oh, yeah, you know, I told her, you know, because Gordon understand he's an old ass lip dick, you know, by every smoothie drinking, you know, nigga. And he ain't going to be able to, you know, break that bike in. And so he was like, look, I understand the setup. Like, go find your dude. And you was cool with it. But then he started probably feeling insecure about the fact that, okay, not only is she going to get D from another man. She now has to find financial security somewhere else. You no longer have the security, so she got to, you know, follow the money. Because what? Cash made the cookie go woo-woo. <laughs> Shout out to next Friday. Um, uh, was, that, was that next Friday? I think it was. Cash made the cookie go woo-woo. I think that was next Friday. But yeah, so, Gordy, you know what the setup is. And then Mia, your old lying ass, she's like... How do you feel about me not drinking? He was like, you not drinking? And she was like, yeah, remember? Because I said I wouldn't, I didn't want to drink. And he was like, but then you ordered a wine after. She's like, well, yeah, you know, like, I mean, not hard liquor. And it's like, Mia, you really thought she was doing like that. That's all Mia do is just lie. Just lie. Okay. So moving on. Um, um, was there another scene after Mia? No, I think after. Oh, yeah, Giselle. Oh, yeah. Giselle, her boy toy, y'all know what that is. Giselle, she found her little boy, uh, John, Jason, whatever, from Winter House. The girls, they weren't really feeling him, but, you know, they he kind of grew on them, little boy toy. Her daughter uh, is going to college. She's growing up to be an am amazingly gorgeous woman. Of course, Giselle is sad, but, you know, still happy that her daughter is out there getting in the world. You know, Giselle likes the setup with Jason because at the end of the day, I don't like no man on my face all the time. I go visit over there. You know, I get to get to lay down on the D and then he come fly, come visit me. He get to, you know, <laughs> fold me up like a pretzel and then I send her right on back. Like, that's, Giselle got her set up, okay? Giselle, we know how this goes. Like, you bringing him on so you got a story on for the season because you can't keep getting away with just poking everybody else's life. But she got something to talk about this season, which is actually her friend, which is what we got to get into now. So they, you know, the Sharice, um, Ashley, and Giselle, they call up on Robin to have a sit down, to have a good, you know, sister circle. And they sit Robin down as I like, look, bitch, you looking crazy. What's going on in the household? And she hits him with a, I mean, like, I, what do you want to say? She's like, because Giselle's like, there's an open forum. And Sharice was like, I didn't have nothing to say. And Ashley was like, well, look, girl. Because Ashley was worried anyways, because she's like, you know, I kind of pointed and, you know, kind of picked at her relationship in the past and it didn't go well. But we know Ashley, you know, she was picking, but was she lying though? <laughs> so she was like, now look, Robin, you know, the girl from Canada situation, like, that ain't looking good because he talking to another woman. And then, like, 
you know, I'm kind of concerned, like, how that make you look? And she was like, well, you know, yeah, he should have been talking to her. But, like, that's, the, you know, it's just always what's going to happen. I don't know what you want me to do because, you know, even with the Bree situation, he went to the laundromat. Like, I know the girl. See, this, this is what people don't know. Like, I know Bree. And she's been, you know, a close friend of Wise because they've worked together for, like, three years. And Ashley was like, ah, 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 ah. those are two different situations. See, Robin tried to hurry up and try to melt that shit together and try to wrap that shit up in a bow. But Ashley's like, no, he might have been going out with Bree, but the situation with Canada is two different situations. He already messed up, you know, but for him to be so disrespectful to not even consider what it would look like for him to be out with another female, it's like, dang, consider the optics, Juan. Like, why are you not caring? And Robin admitted she was like, yeah, why? Well, like, the black is hot. And she was like, he didn't care. Basically, like, what you want to do? Stop living life? And it's like, yeah. Like, you did you really have to go to the laundromat with her? No. Either you could have took it or she could have took it. But y'all didn't have to go together. I think Juan subconsciously is trying to let the world know, like, bitch, we only together for the kids. And, like, it's okay to say that, Robin. It is literally, oh, you're not the only woman to do it. You're not. I really wish more women would come forward and be like, shit, we got an arrangement. But it's hard for women to, I feel like it's almost like a little bit of an embarrassment, it seems like, because what woman with real true esteem allows themselves to be in a relationship with, with the man knowing he's fucking other women type situation especially when we started mono like in a monogamous situation and I think that's what gets a lot of women where it's like they don't really want to admit to themselves what they truly are accepting and Robin I think is not trying to admit to herself that she's willing to accept this shitty ass behavior from Juan and so Giselle calls it out like girl like this is a time to be like if Juan because just Robin tried to turn it into a, what you want me to do? Like, just pile it on. Why don't you pile it on? And it was like, like, what you want to be like, F1, da, 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 da. Like, if the world wants to attack us, the world wants to break us apart. And it was like, see, mm -mm, I heard Juan all up in that because that's what, that's what men do. Baby, don't let them break us apart. Don't, don't let the world do that. They just miserable. They don't want to see us together. Y'all know how these ninjas be doing. Don't let them break us apart. It's me and you, babe. Like, for the boys. Like, let's raise our boys together. But we know from previous seasons when that hot mic situation happened, Juan quite literally said, man, I would not be in this if it wasn't for my sons. So we know what's going on. But Robin wants to, she's so committed to trying to have this picture. Like, we worked through it. We good. But the problem is, Robin, you're talking to other women who have done the same thing, quite literally. You're not talking to single women. That's the, like, or to women who haven't been married. That's the thing. You know, it's different when you're talking to just single women, never married, without kids. And so a lot of people be like, oh, man, they can't say nothing, you know. But you're talking to women who quite literally have done the same thing that you're doing. And so Sharice, I actually enjoy Sharice having this very vulnerable moment. Like, because at the end of the day, like, I think Robin wanted to have, make it a battle, make it a fight, when that's not what we're trying to do. Like, you're immediately trying to make it a fight when it's not that. Like, have a real vulnerable moment where it's like, dang, like, I'm pissed off that he's got me in this situation. And Sharice is like, you know, I feel for you because it's like, I know what that looks like. I dealt with it in my relationship. I made a thousand and one excuses and, you know, he would say things and, then, you know, of course they did the flashback and it's like, but deep down, I knew. Like, women deep down know, but they don't want to look for the confirmation. She was like, I made up so many lies and, you know, I, I don't want to say like, you know, your relationship is mine, but like, I see the delusion that sometimes we create for ourselves. So Rob was like, what, you think I'm in denial? And she's like, eh, yeah, she was like, in New York, it kind of like, when you did watch what happens live, it's kind of given denial. And, of course, they did the flashback when Andy asked, so, Robin, did you check the DM? She was like, no. Like, well, I, I didn't need to look. You know, I just trusted what Walt Juan told me. What? The man lied and 
Travis said that he didn't go to go to the hotel. The man lied said that he didn't help her. So if he's lying right then, what makes you think he's telling the truth about like what? What? And then they called it out and they were like, well, Robin, he talked to girls. She thought, well, yeah, yeah, he should he should have been talking to her. You know, he messed up right there. Like you try to keep breeze breezing past it. Like you can't do that, Robin. Or most like it's you can't do that and then expect other people to. That's the thing. Like people who are who are in very emotionally abusive relationships, because we're gonna call it what it is. To me, it seems like a very emotionally, mentally, a mental and emotional tormenting relationship. Um and so she's like Oh, you know, what do you want me to do? Like, I told him, you know, get out. And, and we worked through, like, we worked through, what you want me to do, mad? That was three weeks ago. I told him to get out and, you know, it would have, and just, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, she tried to breeze past it. Like, she didn't have a, 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 a time frame where she was pissed off. Like, she kept, like, that's what her, like, she's trying to breeze past it. And just, I was like, wait a minute, did he get out? She was like, well, no. Because the last time that's what happened, when they got divorced, they just stayed in the household. And he went off and philandered, but she she just stayed at home with the boys. So it's like, this is what Robin is used to. And Giselle's trying to let her know, girl, that Robin then is not that Robin now. Like, you're strong enough to walk away from this. But here's the truth. Robin one is not going to walk away right now because she feels indebted to helping one out because that is the father of her kids. So because he has lost his job and ain't got no money, she feels indebted to helping him out. Because that's how the relationship started. He joined their family because of like what was going on in his family situation and when they were younger. He like was somebody that her parents took in. Two, this is the only man she literally knows since she was 17 years old. This is the only man she knows. Okay? Two, we don't know what type of shit that Juan is telling her behind the scenes that could be like... That could be like demeaning her self-esteem. He we could he could be telling her all types of shit like oh ain't no man gonna take you you got two kids like we don't know what he's saying to her you know and three it's also another thing too like you don't want to prove the public right she's kind of got that Tisha from Love and Mary Johnson thing going on where you don't want to put prove the public right but it's like one you I mean not one Robin you really are strong enough to walk away from this but you can't keep pulling this oh the world wants to pull us apart. You know, what you want me to do? Like, say F him. And Giselle's like, yes. Because the fact that he's not even caring enough about how this affects you. And then it's like, we ask about your happiness. Like, girl, you happy? And it's like, yeah, my joy has been stolen. But it's not Juan's fault. And they all look at each other like, bitch, who, who else? Uh, like Gis Giselle said, bitch, it, it's one name in the center of all this. Juan. So who do you mean, like, who else is stealing your joy? Wouldn't none of this be happening if it wasn't for Juan? Like, when you watch, it's so hard because I'm that person right now with somebody that I know. Where you're the outside point of view and you can see it clear as day what is happening in the relationship. And every now and again, you'll watch the person kind of pop out of the delusion. But then they get sucked right back in it and it's like, you can't. It's so hard. Nobody talks about how hard it is to watch from an outside perspective watching somebody be in a very toxic, unhealthy relationship. And it's very triggering for me, honestly, because it's like, damn, you want to help this person, but they got to want to help themselves. But yeah, you guys, that's real. So I was going to tell me this went out a little longer than I wanted to. But y'all tell me how you feel about this season. How y'all feel about Ashley just not divorcing from Michael, you know, to get the money. Mia deciding to leave Gordon because he ain't got no money. And how do you guys feel about Robin and Juan Dixon coming back and not telling the story, but not really telling the story? I appreciate you for tuning in. Y'all make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And I'll catch you guys later.